So I wanted first to show you a bit of overview how to get started with this, and then we will we will talk about the dashboard. So uh, what um, here's a step. Would you be able to share the the link here? Uh, yeah, just, the... I just shared it. Okay, good. So like here's where you get started, and that's where we kind of make a bit of introduction. What is the dashboard, and what is important part here is how to deploy it. And the first step how to deploy it is you need to enable data expert, what Zach was saying. And that's like what you are going to do uh, when enabling a data expert. So you actually enable it in every your pay accounts. And we recommend to replicate data in like separate data collection account, or you can call it FinOps account. Uh, that's where you are going to visualize the data we use this data because it's just best practice recommendation and which uh, we've covered in our session with Steph that like don't use management account for anything apart from just like required administrative tasks, move all workloads in, uh, in, in, in linked accounts. And for this, we built a focus uh, data exports consolidation cloud formation templates. And here is, a, uh, here is a guide. So huge call out to the whole team, to Petro, to Yakov, Zach contributed as well. So we have here basically support, support not only for the focus, but we also have a support for CUR 2.0. Uh, so it means, it, it means that with one cloud formation template, you can enable both, or you can choose which one to enable. So you can say, oh, I want to enable focus, or I want to enable CUR 2.0 uh, and, um, and also focus as well. And basically what you need to do to enable this is you run cloud formation template in your data collection account first time and you specify list of your payer accounts or management accounts and then you run the same cloud formation template but now in source account and uh, it will enable your data exports uh, will deliver it in a three bucket locally and then will also enable a three bucket replication to this aggregation account so that's that's how you can you enable data experts, and we also plan to add here um, a support for cost optimization hub in the nearest future. So you will have a way how to just in a matter of few clicks enable all this replication and all this setup across all your payer accounts. And during FinOps X, I had a lot of conversations with customers, and everyone has at least two payer accounts. So who I had. So it's very common scenario. So I would recommend to like to use it to just speed up your start. Yeah. So that's step one, right? So we have data export in it. And and that let's get book get back to the dashboard. And now we go to the dashboard deployments. And to deploy the dashboard, it's very simple. You go to your data collection account, you open the cloud shell, and we have a command line tool which called CID CMD. Uh, and with this CID CMD tool, you just run this command. So you, first you need to install it uh, in, in your cloud shell or any other terminal uh, application which you use. And then you deploy uh, the dashboard with this command. So that's like as simple as that. And once you deploy the dashboard, here you are. So that's, uh, let me just refresh the screen. That's what you will see uh, with your data. This is a demo data, but you will see it with your focus data. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see here, you just you get started with some high level KPIs. What was your effective cost in this case three months ago, two months ago, in previous months? What is the, mo is the most popular region? How many, um, uh, how many providers you are using? How many services you are using? How many total accounts you have? Like very, very high level information. And you can switch how you want to see the cost. And again, in focus, there are several uh, ways how you can, uh, several uh, several measures for the cost, either effective cost, or you want to switch, for example, for least cost. And and you, now you can see like uh, the least cost over the last three months. Or oh, you want to- I, th I thought you said least cost. And I was like, who's least cost? Yeah, least yeah. yeah. Least. And then and then and then build costs that like you, you can see actually what amount you get in your invoice. Yes, so yeah. maybe we can spend a so, minute. Just yeah, I was going to say, do, Zach, do you want to jump in and maybe if Jerry, if you open up the tab so we can see a list of the the different options, do you want to run through what each of these things mean? Yeah. These different costs. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the build costs you can think of as like your 
your actual uh, cash flow. Like uh, how much uh, did I pay AWS or whatever cloud provider, you know, depending on who, who you're receiving this from um, in, in a given billing period. Um, so it, it represents, you know, how much you're actually, and the, the way actually that you should think about it is the sum of your build costs should equal the invoice total for whatever provider you're, uh, receiving this from for that month. Um, but, uh, of course, like a lot of, there's, uh, instances where you might prepay for something and you're prepaying because you're going to um utilize that thing over the uh the following months or, or the following year and a good example for that in aws are reserved instances and savings plans you have the option to have upfront payments for those and what's that one called uh and so then to 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 see that cost we have effective costs so effective costs will actually amortize those costs and show uh, you know, what was the value of the things that I actually used in this billing period? Um, and so you may see effective costs and build costs differ when you've done some sort of prepayment uh, for um, for an RI or savings plan uh, at AWS. Mm -hmm. um, and so th those are uh, kind of probably the two most exciting, most important ones. But uh, we, we also have list costs uh, that you mentioned, which is like, this is the you know, public uh, pricing equivalent of all of the things that I purchased in uh, in a given month. And then there's the contracted cost, which uh, is like list cost, but it also includes the effect of any um, uh, contracted pricing that, that you might have with uh, the cloud provider. Amazing. Okay, that's super helpful. So we've only got like one or two minutes left. Is there anything else? Um, there's one more question in the chat, but is there anything else you guys want to show on this before I go to that? Yeah, I just wanted to cover that like in the dashboard. So I would recommend to explore uh, all the visuals that you see because we actually try to show you like how, the, how you can get value out of focus. So for example, here you can see all your discounts, credits and adjustments which come out of focus. So you could see, for example, mm. here's like your effective cost. And then, like how many, how how much you got of credits, adjustments, then your total discounts, including negotiated and discounts from also like uh, commitment based discounts, and you can see how much you would pay if you didn't like save all this uh, on all this uh, type of uh, discounts and and credits and adjustments. And one more thing, which is very very interesting, which I wanted to show is month over month trend stuff. It allows you to very quickly spot on like the most changing or the moving parts in your uh, in your organization. So like here you will have a different visuals with the trends. And the goal of those visuals to actually help you to quickly see which areas you might need to uh, put more attention. For example, we can see that, oh, here, this account is increasing, for example, in uh, which in May. So you can interactively select this account Rest of the visuals would be filtered now, showing the data only for this account. Then you can see which services you have increased in uh, service categories. And you can also see some more detailed data in what's the difference in percent, what's the difference in your currency. And you can switch here in different dimensions. And the most interesting part is that here you have also resource view for the last 30 days of the usage for what you selected. So it allows you to actually like very, in a matter of few clicks, drill down into just, you know, top cost generators and see, hey, what what what, what are those resources are. So like explore the dashboards, uh, give it a try and let us know what you think. 